Hey, welcome to Super Sons. I'm Jake. And I'm Mike. Normally we'd be guiding you through the DC universe. But today we're going to be looking at one of its newest editions, Primer, arriving on June 23rd. Primer was illustrated by Gretel Lusky with letters by Wes Abbott. And today we will be interviewing writers Jennifer Muro and Thomas Krajewski. All right, how are you two today? Good. Good, man. Thanks for having us. Very, very excited to talk about Primer with you guys. I mean, I, I, when I first saw the solicitations for this, I was super excited. I'm like, this just looks like a ton of fun. And it was. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so, cool. Thanks. So man. speaking yeah. of fun, uh, we like to start off with a really hard hitting journalism question. Uh, Jake, you want to take it away? Of course. Um, what are both your favorite sandwiches? Oh, geez. Jennifer, do you, do you, what, what oh, do you like? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's probably a Reuben. I'm going to say a Reuben, man, or a good Reuben or a good patty melt. Oh, although that's yeah. kind of a burger, I guess. So I guess Reuben. Look, oh, I'll take patty melt then. I'll, I'll say it's a sandwich, right? Burgers are sandwiches. I'll take pat- patty melts are great. I also love Italian subs. You know, I, I'll eat anything though, but as long as there's like some kind of, you know. Jake, was it Tim Seeley we had on that was really big on Italian subs? No, no, it was Jimmy Palmiotti. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, meatball subs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll awesome. take that. <laughs> now I want one. <laughs> how, do you get, how do you guys come up with these questions? They're so tough. Do <laughs> so you guys go to journalism school? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dan actually is trying to make a Excel sheet of everyone's favorite sandwiches. That we oh, yeah. cool. Good yeah. question. I'm just, I'm just saying it's a good question. <laughs> does he get paid? Does he get paid for that to come up with an Excel sheet of everybody's favorite sandwiches? That, I no, want that it, job. It's a personal interest. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's all him. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, so tell us. So, I'm very curious about this. I think Jake is too. How did Primer come to be? Because uh, I I was reading this just a couple nights ago, and I'm just in awe. It just felt like such a creative, fun idea to me, and I, I'm just so curious how how it came about. Yeah, cool. No, thank you. Uh, you know, honestly, it was like two years ago, Jennifer and I were just sitting around literally just, you know, talking about how to create a, a brand new superhero. Um, we've been in the entertainment business for so long. Like, Jen, you've written for, like, uh, Justice yeah. League action, right? Yeah, and I've been doing this since, you know, I've been in the business since oh two. So it's been what? How many years that is? Whatever the math two, is on that Two one. years. <laughs> two, <laughs> two, two years. You're very two young. Years. She's, only, she's only 25 years old. Um, oh, I love your math. That's great math. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So, like, we were sitting around, and, like, um, I, I think, like, you know, that was always the challenge. Like, how do you come up with a brand-new superhero that has, you know, brand-new powers? And, like, it, ultimately, it's like, well, I mean, we just decided to take all the powers and give them to, to one person. Yeah. <laughs> and then from there, I mean, I love it. we was kind of like, how, how do you do that? And, uh, yeah, it was and, pretty surprising. I mean, like, the fact that, Body paints as individual powers has never been done before, I think was quite surprising to people. And it was, uh, I think, surprising to us, too. We're like, has that been done? That yeah. has to have been done. <laughs> and it hasn't. So we were like, and, oh, my God. And I love it because it, it almost just adds to the fact that she she can have any costume she wants because she can just paint it on herself. Like, right. yeah. it's complete creative endeavor at all times. Yeah, I, th- I think like part of that is like growing up, like you know, generally like almost every superhero I read growing up had like their kind of standard costume. You know, Batman like through the seventies and eighties, his costume br- pretty much stayed the same. And then I remember like in the nineties when you'd have like a new artist come on to a book, and they'd kind of like start giving the the superhero like a different spin on their costume. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. What does Batman look like by this artist? By that artist? Yeah, cool and little always, new thing. But it always included pouches. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Where else are you going to put his things? Yeah, his yeah. So, like, and I think, like, that was kind of, like, a big draw for me. It's like, well, what if a character looked different every time uh, he or she went out to go fight, fight crime? I, I just thought it would be really cool to have someone who never looks the same way twice. And, you know, Jen and I were talking about that. And we're like, yeah, body paints, man. You could just, you know, do whatever you want. I also apparently wanted to drive the artist crazy because she looks different every time. So that's fun for them. <laughs> Style guides. What are those? Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, right. I guess th- that is one thing that Gretel, our artist, our amazing artist, had to like uh, tackle. Like we, we would say, yeah, we want Primer to look, you know, here's some rough ideas how she can look. And then Gretel had to go and kind of like translate our, 
uh, our ideas into something that she made look awesome. But I think, yeah, we definitely tortured Pork Brettle. Yeah, you just you made it even more difficult throwing those uh, the wigs in. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, she did excellent work on all of that. Oh, yes, it was amazing. Yeah, she's yeah. great. She's great. Yeah, yeah. the the uh, the wigs is basically like our answer to Clark Kent taking off his his glasses, <laughs> yeah. and all of a sudden, oh, that's Superman! Like this is like oh. Our hero puts on a cool new wig every time she goes out. And you're like, oh, yeah. that's not that's not Ashley. That's a superhero named Primer. So yeah, we thought that was kind of cool. It's, it's surprising how well uh, those the the glasses thing works. <laughs> right, yeah. 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 After yeah yeah. All right. So what was it like for you to curate this story together? <laughs> that's a good question. Go? I love how we're both silent about that. That's hysterical. <laughs> we we used to. Thing. Yeah, we just entered all this information into a computer program and let it write it for us. So, <laughs> machine learning, comic writing. I mean, that's what bots are for. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, you know, that's a good question. Like, I mean, I guess it for. I mean, I think it was. I mean, Tom is is awesome at first passes, and I and I like. I mean, I also come from a development background originally, mm-hmm. and I was a Bible writer and a lot of world building. And G- yeah, Jen, you sold okay. like a superhero show to Nickelodeon. Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I said, I've been doing all of this stuff for a long time. And my first show I sold was uh, in 2011, and it was a female-driven um, fantasy action show. And but you know, I people hire me to write bibles or help develop shows. So I think Tom is is I Tom definitely likes to write alone. I I, I think it's not like <laughs> here's one page for you, one page for me. But you know, it's like I just I don't want to hinder his process. So I'm like, just you know, we'll do a pass and we'll just in chunks and then i'm very good at editing <laughs> yeah so like clearly you know our main character is a 13 year old girl and i uh, surprisingly have no experience being a 13 year old girl right. uh Wait, so what? like yeah I know. you're serious <laughs> i know. surprising so like jen would say tom no no a girl wouldn't say that do that uh you're making it too too girly or something i don't know but so she was really good at keeping me in check um but yeah that i, mean, I think yeah, definitely. Like overall, like we we both just kind of had like a lot of great ideas. It was very organic, just bouncing stuff off each other. Um, but uh, you know, it it worked out well. I mean, I don't know. I mean, luckily we didn't kill each other over this. So <laughs> no, it was the opposite, which is shocking. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you know, hey, it was it was very amicable. So that's awesome. So so when you guys created Ashley, were there like defining characteristics that you felt were important for her to have? Did that kind of develop? Uh, organically as you made the character more or was were there things right at the start you knew that you wanted her to have be a part of her uh, her character? Uh, well, like, I think Jen had brought up a good point like when we were talking about this, about body shape, right, Jen? Yeah. Do you want to okay. elaborate? <laughs> no, 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 no. I was, I was, I was about to ask the, the same question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, it's like, you know, I think, I mean, personally, like for me growing up, having like all like the, 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 the white male like superheroes I could look up to like in the movies, they always had like these perfect bodies, right? You know, they were yeah. jacked and cool. And I was like, that's awesome. I could grow up to be like that. And then I realized I couldn't really grow up to be like that because that's not my body type. Hey, I'm five foot seven. I feel you. <laughs> okay. So you and I are the same then. Yeah. So it was just kind of like, I, I think like it wasn't, it made me feel like, oh, some superheroes just aren't necessarily realistic in a way. It's th- right. Their bodies are unattainable. So we kind of wanted to create a character that is much more um, real life-y. Like this Ashley, yeah. our main character. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. No, no, I'm just saying, yeah, like a 13-year-old girl, you know, she still hopefully has some baby fat on her and that it's just normal and not everybody is super skinny. And, you know, maybe two books from now she'll be super muscly or (laughs) like, you know, because she's running around like crazy. But, you know, I mean, I don't think it it should start out that way. That's for sure. I, you know, maybe she never will be, you know, it's just, it would just, it just, it's nice to have more um, representation. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And. And, like, there were some other things we wanted to throw in there, too. It's like, I think, I mean, I personally like, you know, lots of fun, positive characters. So the the book itself is generally fairly, you know, lighthearted, aside from, like, a little bit of, of drama between um, Ashley and her birth father. So that's something that Jen and I had to kind of talk about. Like, we were like, okay, how do we give this character some kind of, you know, some kind of, sh- she can't be too perfect. She has to have something haunting her. So that, that's what Jen and I had to, like, talk about and discuss. And that, that took a while to, to, uh, to figure out. If, and you read the story, so you know what happens. But yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I think mainly 
you know, DC was great because they, I think we had originally given DC uh, a few different, like, two-page concepts of what the story could be. And it was, you know, it ended up being vastly different because they gave us a lot of great ideas on, like, okay, let's just keep this focused on primer. Um, we need these elements and these elements. And we're like, okay, let's do that and that. So um, the, the, the original concept of just having a superhero with multi, you know, colored uh, superpower body paints, that was always, always there. And then organically things changed definitely as Jen and I talked about it and as DC kind of gave us some guidance. Um, but it was yeah. all very, like, fun. And, and nothing ever felt forced, so we were lucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say nothing about the, the comic feels forced. Everything felt really natural and organic to me, which was one of my favorite things about it. Um, oh, cool. Oh, great. Cool. Just, yeah, like, just just die like the way characters interact with each other just it felt it felt <laughs> real in a genuine way that i that i look for usually and i'm not a huge comic reader jake could tell you um yes. our show is all about getting people into comics that may feel intimidated about getting into comics and uh, okay and so i'm just i'm here because i'm the sound guy that can do all the technical stuff but it's been a great um i've had interest in comics but i've never been on the level that dan and jake are usual hosts and Jake, who's on now, are so. Right. Uh, it's been a great way to be a window for me to get more into this, and b- books like this are perfect to me for that. Yeah, I, I, cool. I thanks. I think that's why, like, when we approached or when DC came to us and asked us if we had any ideas, and we had this one. I mean, they wanted to put it in their graphic novel line to kind of, I believe, kind of you know introduce readers who generally don't read comics. Uh, you know, the, the graphic novels are so huge these days themselves that I think it was easy. To have a young adult novel novelist reader, well, I don't know, how you say that, try, to yeah. try to get them to read the graphic novels and therefore kind of introduce them into the world of comics in general. So, um, I guess uh, we did our job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That worked so, out. You got it. So we we had a question. Um, you brought up Ashley's father, and it was later in our list, but we had a question about that. Jake, do you want to take that one? Yeah, of course. Uh, did you see any pushback on including uh, Ashley's flashback scene, like? How did you find that proper middle ground between making the scene dramatic enough to suit the story yet acceptable enough for a younger audience? Oh, man, good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's funny. I, I, um, I, I feel like they were on board with it, and it was surprising. And of course, once the artwork was added, it, it, it just punches you in the gut in a lot of yeah. ways because it's yes. so it destroys you every time I see that. Picture. It's it's got a it's got a heavy implication. Yeah, absolutely. But, it's, but, it, but it's implied. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, actually, the, the, there was DC was super open to it because I think it was somehow. I mean, just the right combination of not being too dark for an audience to read, but also have an impact. Um, the only thing that they removed from it was there. There was supposed to be like a gunshot at the end of the scene when okay. you see when you see young Ashley and she's crying. There's supposed yeah. to be like a loud bang, and they they removed that, and rightfully so, because they thought maybe it just was, was unnecessary. You kind of understood what was happening, and you didn't yeah. need that and didn't right. want to scare away any readers. You got but, the hint, yeah. and that way it won't affect. You know what I mean? I think it's a balance where it won't be scary for anybody, yeah. but it, yeah. it but it, it's understood. Yeah, yeah, and I think I'm a huge fan of like contrast, and I think it's part of the reason I think it hits you in the gut so hard is that the rest of the book is so colorful and fun and Ashley's such a fun kid. Yeah. And then you see that that's something she went through and you're just like, Whoa, it's, it really, it yeah. hurts when you see it. You feel for her. Yeah. As, as Jen likes to say, like, what do you say Jen about? Like she has her past. So her, her troubled past. So she masks it. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like she uses sarcasm and humor to, you know, to, to, mask some of that kind of pain which many people do i mean you know deadpool did in his own way right um and stuff like that so obviously in a very different way but yeah uh, <laughs> but uh but you know that that masking with humor but and, and also by the way if she if a lot of the stuff didn't happen to her she still would be a genuinely happy person i mean that's who yeah. her core is yeah um, yeah so speaking of speaking of humor um I reached a point in this book where I had to put down my iPad and I think I laughed for a solid 45 seconds oh, before I picked it back up because, really? and, the, and the question this leads to is that I need to know, and, and I'm a dad, so this is probably why this worked for me. I need to know who came up with the night nights. Oh, that would be Tom. I was dying <laughs> laughing at this phrase. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Well, and it, that was amazing. It was one of those things where th- they say it and I'm already laughing and it's almost like I can already see the joke coming that <laughs> Ashley's about to make, but it doesn't matter because when she makes it, it's still funnier because of how flabbergasted <laughs> the night nights get about it. And they're like, no, not the like, <laughs> yes. Uh, first off, thank you. And thank you, Jen, for <laughs> throwing that to me. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Like I love stupid humor. Like I love yeah. stupidity. And, you know, like if you've watched Anchorman, people who think they're amazing but are actually yep. just arrogant jerks. <laughs> and like, so originally that scene, by the way, that's that's you know, thanks to DC, that's the reason the night nights exist. Um, we had originally had a that's an action scene where Primer goes out to fight crime, and originally it was going to be two uh, two cars driving down the freeway shooting guns at each other, and that's how we originally wrote it. And then DC was like, well, you know, let's just keep, we already have the gunshot with, you know, Ashley's dad right. uh, earlier. So let's, can we tone it down? And I was like, yeah, okay, that's, that's totally fine. Let's make it more fun. Um, and so then I was just like, what would be the stupidest kind of street gang? Uh, a gang of knights <laughs> who go out at night and call themselves the night knights. So, <laughs> um, and that's why, that's why they use a cannon instead of any other weapons. Like the, we were allowed to use a cannon, which yeah. is cool because it's stupid. It's a good, it was a good way it's to car- have bizarre It's so cartoonish. Weapons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like Looney just... Tunes cartoonish. <laughs> or like that yeah. the animated series, like some one off villain might have something yeah. ridiculous. Oh, uh, yeah. That's no, these... kind of that in that homage. <laughs> yeah, and these guys, uh, you know, will hopefully show up some more. And if there's ever a movie or TV show, I'd like to be part of the Night Night's gang. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> the uh, best cameo same. of all time. Yeah, exactly. That would be. <laughs> but thanks. Like, I appreciate uh, that, guys. Yeah. All right. So what was the process like for researching things like foster care for this story? Oh, you know, good question. I had a friend, um, she used to be my intern at a studio and she was a foster child who had like a lot of, a lot of horrible stories and she was such a a good kid. And so when we talked about this and Jennifer and I were thinking about how to, you know, give our main character kind of a rough life, uh, the foster idea came up and I went to my friend and asked her, you know, Hey, is this, is this realistic? Would, would you do this Would this? Is this what happens? Do you get interviewed by potential parents? And so like, that was the extent of my research. Cause she had had so much experience. Um, and, and that, that was really important. Yeah. I mean, that was important that we did. We were, uh, cause when we, when we were like, okay, maybe we'll do this. I'm like, we cannot do this unless we really research it because I did yeah. not want to get this wrong because it yeah. would just, be disingenuous. So it was really important to us to get personal anecdotes. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's probably the pr- best way to get information on this is firsthand knowledge. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And I, I, even DC piped in, they had some people who I think that they knew personally. And I mean, at first I think we called it like an, a, an, a, uh, an orphanage and they're like, no, they're called foster homes. We're like, okay, see, so they were immediately they were like, we need to do some research guys. <laughs> you just, you just triggered the, you just triggered the first Paddington movie for me when they reference, reference the orphanage and there's thunder and lightning. And then they're like, no, it's more like a home for people that don't have families. And then they still show it with thunder and lightning and make it look all horrible. <laughs> Oh, Brilliant. <laughs> no, Mike. Mike's on the Paddington training. Yeah, again. sorry. I, don't get me started. I'll go on and on about those films. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! Talk about great children's entertainment uh, <laughs> or thirty-year-old dad entertainment. <laughs> hey, hey you know, why not, man? Whatever works. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jake, I'm going to jump us ahead just in the uh, sake of time. Um, yes. But uh, so, how did you guys decide on what what? colors uh what powers each color held was there any significance to which ones you chose for which colors or coordination i don't think so um i think certain ones might uh, i mean obviously yeah. people have to look at the book to see that fabulous page where we have i love that, that page been, yeah that's uh, <laughs> super fun and and uh gretel did a great job so i'm looking forward to people seeing that i'm looking at it right now but yeah. uh, and so, I mean, Tom, I mean, I think. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's funny because like, as we were writing it, we had all these colors and I, I think as, as we were doing it, we're like, well, if she's going to have in this scene, if she needs to have super strength and some speed and some ice powers, those are three different colored paints. What three different colored paints would look best for this scene or for that scene when she has different powers. And I think we kind of based it on at least this book for now, because we, as since Jennifer and I are not artists and luckily Gretel is who makes everything look amazing. Um, I, I think we kind of based it on like these specific scenes 
what colors might go well together and not like look palette? like they're all the same. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. like, I think like she has, she has thirty three powers, and so like some you know there's only like what mainly red, green, blue, yellow, orange, yellow, whatever, yeah. and different variations of those. So like if we gave her three powers of where they're all kind of variations of yellow, it would just be kind of like boring. So right. So for no, this I book, think, I think it kind of defined it. Yeah. I think looking at that page, Gretel did a good job, a great job, I should say, of of being able to you know make up thirty three different colors, like find thirty three different colors that don't all look so similar. <laughs> um, that page looks so great, and oh, yeah. it goes back to what I was saying about the book feeling so genuine, like just a little. I don't know if it was I, Gretel's idea to put in like the little things like putting like a little smiley face after a certain color or whatever little like notes yeah, that, I think that was all Ashley her. wrote on the page. I It just felt like, you know, it, it's stuff that I remember doing with friends in, in high school. <laughs> you know, when I came across 33 super powered body paints. Oh, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I still have my 33 powered body paints. <laughs> oh, darn. Nice. So, yeah. oh, so fun. I, fun. I, but Tom, I, I think, did you have, I feel like Tom, did you have a, did you hand write your own? Well, well, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, all the colors that are listed on that page are actual. We, Jennifer and I looked up like, okay, what are like every colors you would find in like a marker box, and like that's basically there. You have like, okay, sunshine, uh, day, whatever it is. Like we found like them online, um, and then, but yes, a lot of those touches in there. Uh, I we did have a document that had pr- pretty much as it's written, like the power, and then each. Or the, the paint and then each power listed after is pretty much written as in the document that we gave to Gretel. But yeah, she added all those cool little things right. there, like the okay. smiley faces and all this other stuff. Um, and so, like she, she made Gretel made that thing just pop and look so much like, yeah. like, like you so said, great. like something, yeah, something that you would have done as a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's that. Awesome. Yeah. If you could have Ashley meet any other character in the DCU, yeah. <laughs> who would it be and why? <laughs> Jen, you go ahead. I mean, I mean, I love Harley Quinn. I'm a big Harley Quinn fan. Like Batman the anime series kind of Harley Quinn. Um, <laughs> and that would be super fun. But then again, I love her like when she's like good. So it'd be kind of nice to see just to play with that character. I think it, they'd be interesting having a conversation. Uh, that's my exact thought. I was just going to say, as you said, Harley Quinn, I was like, that'd be an interesting talk. Right. Mm-hmm. I can see her in the the most recent issue of Harley Quinn, where she was hanging out with Booster Gold. Uh, and it fits. It fits. Oh, totally. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Yes. You, Tom? Yeah. I mean, I got to say Harley too. I mean, only because like they're both, you know, in a way, colorful characters. You know, you have so many different iterations of Harley Quinn where, you're, you know, in some cartoons for younger audiences, she's really good and fun. And then she's also evil in some movies. But, yeah, I'd love to see how Primer would, you know, deal with her, either fight <laughs> alongside her or fight her. Um, but that's like my goal. And also the creator of uh, Harley Quinn went to the same college as I did. So I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to be cool. Right. Wow. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Paul, Paul right. Dini went Paul. to Emerson college right. and I went to Emerson. So I think it'd be kind of a neat little uh, thing. Uh, but also since I grew up loving Batman, you know, I'd love her to, to see Batman too, you know, cause he's so dark and then she's yeah. so bright and colorful. <laughs> That'd right be now. hilarious. Nice yeah. That would be hilarious. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mike, do you want to read the last question? Yeah. So what's the, what's the main thing that you both would want readers to take away from this? Oh, I, for me personally, I think it's just like hope, you know, it's like every, every time when I was a kid and I read superhero comics, I was like, oh man, okay, there's some good in this world. I can grow up to be a good person and like yeah. do some good. And that's, that's what I like to think of. So, but yeah, Jen? I think it's the same for me. It's, it's about finding, um, like your, your, your chosen family. Yeah. Um, and making a family that, you know, you find, you know, you didn't, you know, but we're not necessarily born with it. Yeah, and, and also, like, the idea of, like, just, you know, not being, there's a big theme in the book about actually feeling she's going to grow up to be a horrible person like her dad, and then she realizes, oh, no, you know, my fate is not determined. I can choose to be what I want. I don't have to, you know, go by what, you know, society might think I'm going to be. So I think yeah, that's the, a good message. The section where she stands up to her dad and says, like, <laughs> I don't have to be this way, I thought that was so, that was such a powerful message to send. I mean... The note that I wanted to end on, and and I'll let Jake, you know, talk to after this, but um, like I have an 11 year old daughter and I read this and immediately I'm I'm reading it and I'm just like, I cannot wait to get my hands on a physical copy of this for her to read because 
the fact that you guys did like, we, you know, you talked about like representation earlier and body types and, and there's just so many other little ways that you guys sprinkled in things like that throughout the book that didn't feel tacked on. Like they just felt like a natural part of the story, but it, it was so nice to just see that. And, you know, I, I have memories of certain things when I was a kid that, you know, managed to fall into that umbrella, but it's so much more prevalent now. And, and, it's because of writers like you and it excites me so much knowing that my daughter gets to read stuff like this growing oh, up. Oh, great. Oh, that's awesome. So to hear. I, I, I wanted to say thank you to you guys for, oh. for that because it's just, it's, it's just so wild to me. Oh. Cool. Thank oh, you so much for awesome. saying that. Yeah. yeah. That means a lot to us. Thank you. Thank you for so oh, much. Guys. Of course. Thank you guys for being on. I mean, yeah. you, you, you guys put out a stellar book. Oh, yeah. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> thank you so and I, much. And I can't wait to look at it without the, uh, the watermark on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that watermark's there on every book. Is yeah. it next Soon. week? I think it's next week, right? Or I don't know. Yes. Know. Yeah, it's Tuesday, June twenty third. Awesome. Oh so where where can our listeners find you guys online? Um, I am on Twitter at uh, Jennifer Muro. I'm mostly on Twitter, and Instagram is official Jennifer Muro, and those are pretty much the two places. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry, I went because I'm like never online. I'm like I'm, a, I'm horrible at like. What is your mailing address? <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Where do you live? <laughs> uh, I think I'm somewhere. I don't know if you you'll find me. <laughs> well, we gotta send that sandwich somewhere. I think oh, you're Tom, yeah. are you Thomas Krajewski or Tom Krajewski on Twitter? You know, Tom? I, I don't even know. It's like I don't know. N- nobody cares. Just go to Jen's. <laughs> go to Jen's social media. There you go. <laughs> she's, she's more entertaining, anyways. Yeah. Well, I thank you. All right, thank you. Well, thanks again so much to you both for being on. This was a bless. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys it. for having us. Really appreciate it. And I'm so glad you liked the book. Or we, we're so glad you liked the book. And yeah. th- thanks for thanks for having us, guys. All right. So like we said, Primer will be out on Tuesday, June 23rd. Uh, we just talked to the writers, Jennifer Muro and Thomas Krajewski. Uh, art is by Greta Lusky and letters by Wes Abbott. Um, and everybody on that book was fantastic. It's a good book. Yeah. And uh, catch us next time. Same bat time, same bat channel.